So welcome to 10 with Tim, an in-depth look at the topic that we're exploring this week, which is response to a question, who do you invest in? And this starting point response, invest in yourself. Now for me, I think you really have to <laughs> accept that if you are not operating in the best way you can as a leader, then all of the interactions that you're gonna have with your team, your customers, your stakeholders on a broad spectrum, all of them are gonna be deficient in some way. So if you're not prioritizing yourself and investing in yourself, you're essentially in, in a depreciating return situation. Now I would put my hand up and say, I'm not great at this. It's a learning journey that I'm on to prioritize myself ahead of others, uh, but I'm trying and making iterative progress. So I'm gonna share some of those experiences with you as much as I'm gonna recount the experience and research of clients and people in our team and experts that we've had in interactions with. So there's five areas that I'm gonna to discuss today in a little bit more detail than in the time with Tim Clip that preceded this exploration, but there's a lot in here. These are complex topics. So if these are of interest to you, I'm gonna reference some resources but also would invite you always to get in touch with me and the team at 4i and see what we can do to help you. So the first area is de-stressing. And this is one where we within our team have got some real subject matter expertise in Dr. Tom Allen Livenoir. So Tom is in LA and his uh, doctoral dissertation was on stress in the virtual environment. Kind of topical right now. Um, and there's two parts to this process that Dr. Tom uh, works, with, uh, works with executives on. The first is identifying the stress and then remediating the stress. And I'm not gonna attempt to uh, take subject matter expertise away from Tom here, but simply to say that my experience with this has been dividing the influencing area into you, those that immediately surround you, your immediate environment, and then what you receive from the environment around you. The, the process that I've been through is working through listing those, looking at what I can influence and what I can't, and then what I can influence, trying to work on progressively reducing the amount of stress that I get out of each of those areas, that has been very, very helpful. So stress is something which you experience significantly ever, but particularly right now, and you'd like some help with it, get in touch with me or get in touch directly with Dr. Tom via the US page on our website, and either I will do my best or Tom can really help you with that. Second one is restoring energy. Now this is something that I'm not gonna go into in detail because it's very complex and individualized, but what I will share is that in my experience, by self-experimenting with movement, nutrition, and rest, I've seen dramatic improvements in my own energy. So for me, what's really worked is moving early in the morning when I have a puppy at home, so getting out and walking with her and you know, doing a little bit of you know, sort of functional training in the morning, that works for me far better than at the end of the day. And then what I found is that by moderating what I'm eating, eating better, eating a little bit later and then not as late in the day, just kind of compressing what I'm eating, that that has really improved my energy. And then resting, you know, being conscious to essentially dial it down, even just two notches out of 12 during the day and, and just sort of taking, taking a little bit of the force off, that helps, but then also really protecting the biggest rest element and the end of day down regulation, that is, is the most significant one, which leads us to the third area, sleep. Sleep is a, a real battle for me, and it's interesting you know, when you're dealing with something and kind of wrestling with it yourself, and then you're open about that, how many other people are having a similar experience and again, you can then kind of buddy with them to find out what's working and what's not working. So as a, as a result of this journey that I've been on with sleep over the last four or five years, there's a few resources on our website in the lead well, be well area that if sleep is a challenge for you, you might find some help from. But in particular, I'll mention two books, Sleep by Nick Littlehales and Sleep Smarter by Sean Stevenson. And I think these are horses for courses but both helpful, I have found. So Little Hale's approach is very systematized and a process. So it really is sort of do this, then this, then that, then do that, which works really, really well for some people. I have found that doing elements of that 
in combination with some of the specific recommendations of best practice from Sean Stevenson's book and kind of augmenting them into the process, that has really maxed out the return that I get from sleep. So maybe give that a go. Okay, so the fifth, oh sorry, the fourth area is connect. Connect with yourself and then connect with others. And specifically connect with your purpose and values and then with others who share your purpose and values. And that those two things in combination have really been fantastic, fantastic for me, and also fantastic for my team. And that has really been the common ground which, around which we have come together as a unit. So beyond that, there's this specific exercise that's come from Dr. Alan Fraser around reflecting, pausing, and resetting. And what I've found is that the pause bit I've been doing for a little while and working with clients on in what we call 60 second stillness. But the, the reflection and the reset bit, which has come from Dr. Adams' research, has really maxed this out. So that we, we had a longer conversation about this in Dr. Adams' podcast episode on Better World Leaders. So if this is of interest, you can maybe go check that out. But essentially what this comes down to is reflecting on everything that you've done that is good whether that's been the last hour, the last day, the last week, month, however long. Spend some time to internally, essentially, review and celebrate what's working. Then pause. And in pausing, just really let whatever needs to come, come out. Whether that's emotion about the day, or concern about something, or really, you know, positive, oh, actually, and that thing, let's celebrate that. Like, just be still distraction-free and just let whatever come is going to come. And the final one is, is, is then to reset. And this is a conscious visualization of how you want to show up, how you want to show up as a parent, how you want to show up as a partner, how you want to show up for your team, all your customers and your suppliers and all of your stakeholders as a leader. And then in doing that and being really intentional about that, that is a way for you to really be purposeful and to so give yourself and be kind to yourself, give yourself some praise, sort of allow everything that needs to just be expressed, be expressed internally, and then to be very intentional about how you want to show up. And this exercise I have found to be fantastic, so highly recommend you give it a go. That is, I think, less than 10 minutes, but I hope enough information for now. If any of these topics are of interest, check these resources out or feel free to get in touch, drop me a direct mail, drop me an email, send something in the comments here. And either I or someone at 4i or Dr. Adam or somebody else that we know, I hope will be able to help you. Thanks for your time and attention. See you soon.